All right. So diving right in, what is it about Nimona that like drew you to the project? I was mainly first drawn, um, having been a huge fan of Endy's prior to my casting. So knowing that this was an incredible story already on page in graphic novel form that was also inherently queer and created by a queer person. I mean, that was kind of like you, you already had me sold. And then let alone being approached to, to voice act in it, I was over the moon. What is it then about Ambrosia specifically that that kind of hooked you as a, as a character you wanted to play. Yeah, I feel like Ambrosius is such a great representation of this idea of being stuck between this sense of what you're being told is right versus what you feel you know is right. And that is something that everyone can relate to at some point in their lives. With him, it's like really deeply tied to his identity as like the hero of the realm. And that's something that I've always related to, especially as an Asian American, as a, a, a queer person, this idea of performing the duties and the honors that I've been told in the systems I live in and then bucking that in the end. That's Ambrosius to a T and that's a lot of my life. Did you get the chance, like I know this is based on the graphic novel, but did you get the chance to kind of have input with the creative team to expand Ambrosius from where he was on the page to now what we see on screen? Yeah, I think that uh, a lot of that was done by the writers who did such an incredible job of translating this particular version of, of Golden Loin. And um, for me, I think what was really cool was, you know, I ad libbed quite a bit in the booth. And so there were like small changes that were made here and there that fit the I guess the the situation more in, in certain scenes. And a lot of that was, I think. You know, they, they knew that he had to have a certain amount of charm to him to be believable as this like hero. But also at the same time, he's going through a lot of bad stuff with his 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 man. And so that aspect, like, I mean, you can't really teach that. I was just pulling from experience. I was like, oh, God, this is like me fighting with my boyfriend. So that's that was, I think, where there was quite a bit of like, ah, he's we can source some of that that uh, personal strife and use it as part of his character. Is there like a standout ad lib that you can remember that you just thought, yes, love this? Yeah, I mean, the, there there is a point in the film where he imagines that he like actually has an outburst with the the director, and it's something that um, most of that was written, but it changed quite a bit. And I also there's takes of me just just screaming for three minutes about just absolutely whack the wackiest things. Um, and I think that was uh, one of the first times in the booth that I really felt like, oh, this character is going to be such a, a great example of of a stressed out person who's trying to do his job. <laughs> but really, it should, should should also try to to honor his his one true love. What would you say if there were any like specific challenges that came with with adapting this story for the screen? Yeah, I think that the challenge is that, you know, it's always hard to um, update or translate something from from book form and ND being a part of the process. And also, I know he likes the film. He loves the film. It's, it's a different version of the story. But I think a lot of that was, you know, I believe truly that the one thing that makes this film really work is making sure that Nimona is her spirit everything about her needs to be translated the most directly to screen because that's what made the graphic novel so successful and really impactful. And I think it's it's been achieved. It does such a great job. Nimona is such a, such a cool, lovable, complex, weird, chaotic character. And so they, they really, really nailed that. And on my personal level, I just really love on screen that the Ambrosius and Ballister relationship is, is established unabashedly up top in the film and that they're really tender with each other the entire time. Like even when they're fighting, they're very tender. And I think that's that was a really cool choice that was made. I like how how explicit that was made, like right off the top, because the graphic novel does take a minute to get there. Yeah. But five seconds into seeing them, I'm like, I hope these two. And then immediately. And it was yeah. just so You're like, so beautiful boyfriends. <laughs> yes. yes, boyfriends. And I don't have to delude myself for two hours. They are boyfriends. Absolutely. There's no will they won't um, they. It's like they did. They did. They had. They will. <laughs> they still are. They still are. <laughs> so we can stay spoiler free, but is there a specific moment you are most excited for audiences to see? Yeah. I mean, you know, I think the climax of the film is really, really impactful and important. And the line that's delivered, um, I see you at a particular part is just such a it's such a graceful, simple message that is lost on so many people out there right now. This idea that if you just can recognize that someone is different or struggling or 
just wants to have uh, the validation of someone saying like, I care about what you're going through. I care about who you are. That is like the bottom line. And that's what Nimona needed. That's what a lot of viewers I think might need. And I think that is like, that's the standout um, message for me that you walk away from the film with. And then is that the message you hope? That's the message you hope that audiences take away at the end. Is that yeah. the importance of being seen, I the guess. The importance of being seen. I also love the message. I hope they take away the feeling of like, find little ways to rebel in, in the institutions that are trapping you. Like, you know, there's, there's some healthy, uh, proactive ways you can do that. I love that. I love that. Turn into yeah. your version of a whale. <laughs> I just said, turn into your version of a whale. <laughs> Whatever that means to Whatever you. Whatever that means to you. 